Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Matt Chat Live. I'm super, super glad to have a fellow here by the name of Eric Almeida, and he'll tell you about himself in just a moment. But uh, I've been going through a series on LinkedIn and, of course, other platforms, but primarily LinkedIn, uh, about body talk and trauma. And uh, recently, Eric and I had a chance to to talk about some things for upcoming podcasts. I'm like, hey, man, this fits perfect. So we decided to jump in and dive into some things right now about Eric and what he does for, for a living and what he's a practitioner at. And uh, I just thought it was amazing for you all to hear and understand. Um, uh, some of it can be, even as I talked uh, recently in the series, uh, uh, video number three about EMDR and, you know, waving a little pencil or or a light or something like that, right? Sounds goofy, but uh, it's an actual therapy that does work and treats things like PTSD and, and, and trauma. So so EFT is a lot about the same about tapping. So Eric, with all that, kind of a little bit of a setup, welcome to Matt Chat Live. Thanks and, uh, for having me. Oh, yeah, for sure. So Eric, why don't you give, uh, give folks a little bit of information about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I'm an I'm emotional so freedom technique practitioner. I am based out of Western Massachusetts. And so essentially what emotional freedom technique is, it is also referred to as EFT or tapping. It is when you tap on certain acupressure points on the body that are affiliated with Chinese medicine. And the purpose for tapping on these acupressure points is that it helps calm down the fight, fight and freeze response that we all naturally have. Now we need this response for survival. We need this response in moments where you're driving on the highway, someone starts merging into your lane and you jut out of the way. The same, you, you need the same response if you're going for a hike and there's a snake on the path and you jump back. But where this response gets in the way is in regards to traumatic memories. So we can all think of a time where we did something embarrassing. And if we think about those that memory now, your heart might start racing, your, your hands might start get clammy, you might lose the complexion in your face. And that same fight, fight, and freeze response is being activated again, but to a memory. And the reason why our minds do that is that when that memory happened live, um, you either were in actual danger or in perceived danger. So your mind holds on to that memory and so that it can remind you, hey, if this happens again, plan for it in the same way you want to plan for the car swerving into you or the snake on the path. But with with other memories, it can tend to turn into a problem and actually create scripts that we end up living out in our lives. So for instance, if you had, an, if you had a traumatic experience with a parent and now your boss reminds you of said parent, even though the aggravation you may be getting from your boss is legitimate, it's gonna be fueled by that script of the past. And then all of a sudden, instead of you just being mildly irritated, you might get furious and then all of a sudden you're cursing out your boss and then you get fired. No one wants that to happen. So, so the lovely thing with EFT is that you tap initially on the surface level issues. So you're pissed off at your boss. They're, they're a jerk. They're making, you know, they're holding you back from making more money, whatever is going on. And typically what will end up happening is that not only does that initial contemporary issue start to subside, memories will start coming to the surface from one's past. Whatever the memory is, it is somehow tethered to what you were just talking about. Our minds intentionally try to hold that stuff back, but the tapping helps relax that natural response. And so our minds kind of let that stuff start slowly bubble to the surface. And the goal with EFT is to process those old memories from the past and get that emotional response down to zero, down to nothing. Because most of us don't remember most of our past. We, a lot of us forget what we had for breakfast, let alone what happened to us 20 years ago. And most of the memories that linger in our, in our minds are either very good memories or very bad memories. And the very bad memories are the ones that can manifest these scripts that we kind of live in the present. And so as you're doing the tapping on those old memories, it slowly allows the memory to be processed. It allows the memory to be, to be let go and it ends up dissolving the emotional charge behind the memory. I've had clients describe it when a memory was cleared, I've had clients describe it as either they can't remember it at all, like almost like, almost like instantaneous amnesia in a funny way. Um, I've even had some clients describe it like the memory lost color. It turned, it, the memory turns into a series of just facts. I was here, this is what happened and that was that. There's no, there's no, 
emotion, there's no anger, there's no shame, there's no anxiety, there's no depression, all of that is gone. You still remember it, it doesn't erase the past. It simply gets rid of the emotional charge. And then that, that psychic mental vitality comes back to you. And then you're not repeating the scripts in the present. Yeah, that's and, amazing. So, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of meat on that bone that you just uh, threw out there for everybody, right? But uh, you know, some folks might be like, "Oh, that's fantastic!" Or, "Yeah, I've heard about that kind of stuff, but I don't know if I'm going to sit around my office and do this kind of number. And if I've got road rage, I'm not going to be able to do this while I'm driving. I'm going to look like a crazy man." So, you know, there's there's a lot to that, and and of course, skepticism would be, "Well, you know, you don't understand my trauma. It's pretty it's pretty traumatic, right?" So just doing a couple of those things, how in the world am I going to be able to kind of get through that, let alone forget it or forget what it feels like to be through that, right? There's some serious stuff that happens in our lives. And uh, obviously, this isn't the this isn't the magic pill cure-all for everything. Uh, neither are some of the other styles and techniques and treatments I've been talking about, but it's, it is highly effective. Um, so I know that, you know, growing up as a kid, you didn't sit there and think, you know, one day I can't wait to be a tapper and show <laughs> people how to do this tapping. This is amazing. Right. So I think that uh, you have actually besides just becoming a practitioner, uh, you use this before becoming a practitioner. Right. How, how that happened for you? Yeah. So, you know, growing up, my I did want to be I've always wanted to help people. And when I graduated from college, I graduated with a psych degree with the intention of becoming a therapist. And when I worked for about a year in a residential program for children, I realized I wasn't emotionally and mentally strong enough to handle that kind of work. But I stayed in like custom, the customer service realm for a long time. And what ended up connecting me with EFT was actually having a panic attack when I was at work. So I was working in subsidized housing. Um, it required me to maintain a very strong customer service mask, which for me personally actually made my own issues worse because I had lived most of my life suppressing my emotions. And so the customer service mask created even more of a disconnect from the people around me. Wow. And so I was, I was at work doing a normal recertification process in government paperwork, nothing out of the ordinary. And I just felt like something was fundamentally wrong. And so I got my boss to start covering this appointment and I walked into the maintenance office and I just started freaking out. You know, my heart was racing. I was hyperventilating. I was, my hands and my feet were starting to go numb. I thought I was having a heart attack. So I, I call 911 to, and, and tell them, I think I'm having a heart attack. They send over an ambulance. I call my husband and I say, Hey, I, I leave him a voicemail and I say, Hey, I think I'm dying. Goodbye. And oh that, like, I basically said goodbye to him, which he certainly did not appreciate after the fact. And, what a, what a that one was. Wait, you didn't text it, did you? <laughs> no, 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 no. That was a voicemail. <laughs> and um, luckily, the paramedics, when they came in, knew exactly what was going on. You know, they, they did the blood oxygen thing on the finger and the blood pressure cuff. And they were like, good news, bad news. Good news. It's not a heart attack. Bad news. It's a panic attack. They helped me calm me down with some breathing exercises. They offered to take me to the hospital. I say, never mind. My husband calls me back. He's like, oh my God, what's happening? I'm like, it's a panic attack. I'm okay. And he comes pick me up from work. And I take the next day off because I'm like, this was just weird. I don't know why this happened. And I just try to go back to work like everything was normal. I get there and those feelings come rushing back. And I'm like, nope, 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 nope. I can't be here. So I, I just, I bolt out of the office. I actually drove past my boss as I was leaving. And, um, and so I, I try again the next day. And that time I didn't even get to work. I got about halfway down the highway and the same feelings came back and I turned around. You weren't even um, like, you're like thinking about like, I hope I don't have that happen again. Uh, did, did you work yourself up into a frizzy or did it just, it just started happening? It just started happening. Like it, I wasn't, I, in the, in the very beginning, I just treated it like this was weird. I don't know why this happened. And I was just like, oh, this is just a fluke, whatever. Like, I just need to go back to living my life. And I real I hadn't realized that I was really white knuckling it like through life. Like I had been really just kind of like forcing myself to endure a lot and thinking that that was normal. And it got to the point where my, my mind basically was like, no. And it's like, we can't do this anymore. And that's what the panic attack was. It was basically my mind coming up behind me with a bat and saying, we were trying to be nice. I knew something was wrong. I knew I needed to do work on myself. And my mind was like, well, whack. And it took me out with a panic attack. You're going to do then, something now, buddy. 
<laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Seriously, it it gave me no choice, and it ended up getting worse. That before it got better, I ended up becoming agoraphobic. I was scared to leave my house. I ended up confining myself to one room in my house, kind of alternating between being super depressed and just hysterically crying. My husband did everything he could to support me, but he was just like, oh my God, like what the hell is going on? And so I reached out to a therapist that I knew that I had connected with before who had incorporated EFT into her practice. I call her up and I'm like, Sarah, I'm like, this is what's happening. This is where I am now. Can you make room for me in your schedule? And can we do it over the phone? Cause I can't leave my house. And she was, she said yes to both. Thank God. And with the EFT work, about after a month, the agoraphobia went away. I decided, to, I took a medical leave from the job and then decided just to quit. I just realized this job wasn't healthy for me. And I kept, continued to do work with her with the EFT. By the end of that year, I had started my own business. I had opened up an antique store. I did that for about a year, uh, still doing the work with Sarah. Um, and I had never opened my own business before. And that was, a, that was a huge amount of change in just a couple of months since the panic attack. You're going to be coming out of your room and you've got an antique store. So that's I know, amazing. right? <laughs> a dramatic yeah. change. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of the skeletons I had buried, you know, I was able to process. There was, you know, and, and it was certainly rough. Even having the antique store, there were times where it was rough, which is why I still needed the support. And... Before, right before COVID started, I had closed the business. It just wasn't financially viable. And over in the middle of all this COVID nonsense, uh, one of my colleagues had um, gotten certified herself as a practitioner, an EFT practitioner to incorporate with her bodywork practice. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a thing. Like, I, I'm like, how did you do that? So I spoke to her and I spoke to Sarah and I'm like, hey, like, how did, how did this happen? And they're like, oh, it, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a guided certification process. You take this training, you have um, supervision, and then you can practice on your own. I'm like, oh, I thought it was a much more arduous, you know, difficult process. And so I took a class. I took, I took the certification class to, to dabble in it to see if I wanted to do this as a career. I just fell completely in love with it even more. I continued to do work on myself as I was doing the certification and the supervision. And if anything, my self-healing accelerated. And the person that I am today talking to you, Matt, is uncomparable to who I was even a year or so ago, let alone when I graduated from college back in 07. And you know what I want to do with this EFT work is I, I want to give this gift to other people. Because I had my own trauma from my past. I was bullied incessantly when I was growing up. So I was in, you know, I grew up, you know, I was a 90s, you know, I was born 85. I grew up in the 90s and I like graduated in the early 2000s. That was back in, you know, in the day where calling something stupid gay was all the craze. And me being a very closeted gay boy at the time, people were, you know, and being also You're gay, bro. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So me being bullied in that way was pushing a button people didn't realize I had. And so I learned very, very young to not express myself. It made it very useful in customer service with the customer service phase, but did not make it useful when it came to being a human being. Mm. So for a very long time, my emotions were very disconnected from my from action. So like something would happen and I would feel it like three days later. And then three days later, I'd be like, why am I angry? Why am I upset? Why am I anxious? And it was because I had this humongous emotional delay. And the EFT was able to, by going back into those old memories and letting all that emotion go, was able to kind of resync me so I'm actually experiencing emotions live, like I should be. Yeah. And then also getting back my mental vitality so that I can handle the normal stresses of life, because life has its moments where it sucks, yeah. and not completely crumble to it, and not play an old script from my past that I had learned from an old trauma. No, that's that's so amazing, Eric, and what a what an amazing application and story. So, yeah, folks. So, like, he didn't just like uh, you know see it online, read a story about it, and then become an EFT practitioner. I mean, this was this was life changing stuff for you, literally. And then when you found out, what do you mean I could I could actually make a living on this and help other people do the same thing? Are you kidding me? Sign me up, right? So you just went that way, which is amazing. Which is how we ended up uh, meeting each other and talking. Amazingly, well, I'm doing a trauma series. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty wild. And there's just so many different um, types of people that will be listening and watching uh, this episode that have been through so many 
things in their lives. You know, I mean, I was I was in the war, right, in the military, so I, a PTSD, and then of course my battle with cancer. You know, you pile that on with PTSD. Now there's things like it's called PTSD C. Like there's even deeper levels of PTSD. Uh, now you're thinking, yeah, I heard about that the other day. I was like, oh, that's wild. I'm so okay, I'm gonna write that down. I need to figure that one out myself, right? Yeah, it's a, it's another level. So there's just so many different um, different things that are happening out there. I mean, even thinking about yourself talking about as a bully, the whole stupid gay thing from the '90s, and then you, um, I can imagine for you then to be able to come out, right? Like you were you were you were hiding who you really were. You were suppressing all these things. You were afraid because they were bullying you and didn't want somebody to take you in the back corner and kick your kick your ass or something like that, right? So I mean, so now you you had enough strength and fortitude to be able to live into who you are, what you wanted to do. Uh, that takes a lot. I don't know if that was like before, during, after college or anything in your life at that point. Uh, but I can well, only imagine. The coming, I came out uh, the spring, spring, spring semester, spring, my senior year of college. college. I was more on the later end of the spectrum for that time. Nowadays, people are coming out at like 10, 11, 12, which is great. And I'm, I'm grateful the younger generation has a more accepting environment to walk into for more of them, not everyone. But um, so it was a little bit later in, in life for me. And yeah, it, you know, it, I, had to, I had to learn a lot of things as a young 20 year old, things that the average person would learn when they're, you know, 12, 13, 14. So like, you know, I was very emotionally stunted and sexually stunted because I had suppressed so much of that part of me for such a later part in my life. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of people who come out later in life, you know, depending on how they handled it, you know, understand that kind of it's, it's a consequence of being in the closet. It's you are really shoving back a, a huge part of yourself. And it, it it takes its toll. Like one one very bizarre thing for me was I couldn't sing songs until I came out. For whatever reason, my mind could not recall lyrics or even or even um, um, tunes. For whatever reason, and then, like within a month after coming out, I, I noticed that I was like humming songs, and I'm like, I I could never remember this. So it's like it's really bizarre. I, I still can't explain exactly how that worked, but it was really bizarre that like the different th like when you shove one thing down, you're pulling other things down with it. And so, a lot of people can relate to that even now with you know, not being able to express oneself, it could be sexually, it could be politically, it could be religiously, like when you have to hide a part of yourself in a profound way with family or with work, it, it, it takes its toll for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh, so, so true. That speaks to so many people that are going to be watching and listening here. And with what you're doing through EMT or EMT, I did it. I did it. <laughs> EFT. I am not. I am not a, a paramedic, yeah. but thank you. <laughs> I, I put it out there. Now I made myself think it. So uh, for EFT, though, it does provide uh, quite a bit of freedom. I mean, that's that's the F in the whole word as well, right? So it does give you that freedom, and you feel you feel much freer in your life than you ever have been before, right? In, in all 100%. aspects of Eric, right? Of all yes. of you, yeah. Uh, which is an amazing thing, and you you would give. You would give credit to uh, a lot of that too through the through this practice of EFT. Yeah, I, you know, I had seen conventional therapists in the past, and they had helped, but the EFT just it really accelerated the emotional processing. So, like for me, doing something like this with you now, having this conversation with you live, knowing it's going to be broadcasted online, and me talking about these intimate parts of myself, the me of a year or so ago would be like, hell no. I would mm -hmm. never have done this. And there was a time where I had a terrible fear of public speaking. So even just the thought of doing this on the fly like we did, I would probably be in the bathroom sick as a dog thinking about even trying to do it. And all of that is gone because of me working on the bullying of, of the past. It all kind of facilitated those that contemporary issue of fear of public speaking. Mm -hmm. And a so great thing specific to trauma is that EFT allows a person to work on their trauma without having to necessarily relive the trauma live again. So it's called tapping around the issue where you put your intention on what happened to you in the past. But then you but when you're talking about it as I'm guiding you through the tapping, 
we keep it vague to work on the emotion more on the periphery to get that emotional charge down. So I want to use a different example from yourself. So I don't want to, I don't want to trigger you in the moment, but like if someone was abused by a relative and, but they weren't ready yet to talk about it in more detail, we would be tapping on this terrible thing happened to me and I really wish it didn't happen. And it happened by someone who I was supposed to be able to trust. And I, it really upset me. It still affects me today. It still bothers me today. I want to be able to let this go. And you start on that, those kind of very surface level thing on the edges and you slowly bring that emotional charge down. And typically the client over time will get more comfortable where they may want to talk about it or they may never want to verbalize it. And that's fine. We, even me as the practitioner, I can work with someone with a trauma and they don't, ne they don't ever have to tell me if they don't want to. It makes it easier if they tell me because I can use the details to kind of help move things along. But if someone says to me, this really bad thing happened and I don't ever want to talk about it, I would say to them, okay, let's just give it a nonsensical name. It's another technique, a nonsensical name, and we'll tap on that. So it's like, okay, you have this pineapple memory. This bad thing happened. We're going to call it the pineapple memory. And we're just going to tap on the pineapple memory. And that's it. And we'll never talk about any details. And for, for your listeners, they may be like, that sounds like a load of crap. I've done it with clients and I've had it done to me on, on the other side of the other side as a, as the client itself as well, when I was training as, and also when I was in therapy myself and it does work mm -hmm. because you're, even if you're not talking about it, your intention is on the thing that you're trying to work on and the tapping it's calming that fight, fight and freeze response. And when you're thinking about that super traumatic thing, it's it's still calming you down and the emotion is slowly being let out because we suppress all of those traumatic emotions to protect us, but that comes at a cost. It comes at a mental and psychological cost. And our minds, you know, only have so much reserve and we need to let, we need that reserve back to live life. Life is not easy. Anyone who's lived their life can tell you it's not easy. You know, accidents, disease, death are unavoidable, but we can let the past go. It doesn't mean we forget the past. We still learn from the past, but we don't need to hold on to the, um, the negative emotion of the past anymore that we mm. can let it go. And yeah. EFT is, is one, a great modality to do that. Yeah, absolutely love it, Eric. That is so fantastic. So um, I know there's a couple of things here for folks uh, and for sake of time that uh, folks can get a hold of you and reach out to you. And I know you have a, a really awesome special offer for folks today as well, which I'm super excited about. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how they can, how people can reach you and, um, and how folks, because you can do this virtually, I would assume, right? Don't have to be face to face. Yep. Yep. I, yep, this, uh, all of my training and all of the clients I have, everything is 100% virtual and they don't yep. have to be in the state of Massachusetts, the benefit of being a practitioner. That's really good yeah. because I know personally about some of those law restrictions from state to state or country to country, whatever. So, yeah, tell us a little bit more. How can folks reach you and 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 uh, what's that that deal you got going for them today? Absolutely. So you can go visit my website. It's ericeft.com and that's Eric with a C. You can use promo code MattChat, one word, to get $30 off your first session with me if you want to give a try. I also offer free consultations if you just want to talk to me and see if we'll be a good fit and if EFT would work for you. And you can also visit my Facebook page. That's Eric Almeida EFT Practitioner. And me and my colleague, Stacey Every are currently offering free monthly workshops that you're welcome to give a taste of. Um, our workshop that we did this past January was on resolutions. And the one that we're doing in February on the 18th, I don't know when this is going to come out live, um, is going to be on love. Because I don't know about you, but Valentine's Day tends to be triggering for everyone, whether or not you're in a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the right be, there, right? So they would get yep, Matt, Matt chat. Yep. yep. And that's uh and again that website they can go to is ericeft.com. Perfect. And they perfect. Get Matt chat in there and uh y'all can get started. Amazing, right? So this is really great. And folks, uh here's the other thing. It doesn't have to be necessarily that I mean the first thing people are going to think about with trauma is like you were sexually abused as a child. I mean, it's just the I would think most people could go to that oh trauma, right? So it, it may not necessarily be something like that because like, trauma is trauma. It could be that your your house caught on fire. It could be, um, you know, like automobile accident. I mean, there's all kinds of things that it could be a bad relationship, whatever. Trauma is trauma. And uh, there are ways to work through it. 
And uh, this is one of the reasons I love this, be it, especially being a cancer patient and on uh, a plethora of, of pills and medications that I can't stand. Um, this is pill free. <laughs> this is just yeah. all, this is all an opportunity to do something and train yourself in a way to do something. And once you've learned how to do this, you can apply it in your life. So I'm sure Eric uses this on a regular basis in his own life, just as a, oh, yeah. as okay. a person. Yeah. So um, what a great, great opportunity to learn this technique and, and actually do it well. So again, folks, if you want to go to Eric, EFT.com. Uh, you'll be able to get a, a connection point there to use code Matt chat and you'll be able to get a great discount. And uh, Eric, I'll also have uh, on the show, also put your, your main website up there too for folks to get a hold of you. But Eric, thank you, thank you so much for being a guest here at Matt Chat Live and for sharing some things here during my series on body talk. And this is definitely one of those places of body talk. Our bodies uh, show things, right? They, they remind us that something's going on. Um, heck, Eric's body sure reminded him something with needed attention. Talk about body talk. Good grief. Um, but you found a, a great way. I think therapy is important and, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a both and here. I think therapy and tapping, you know, is a, is a great way to look at things, but even, I don't know, man, I don't have the money. I don't have the time, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Start somewhere. This is a great opportunity to start somewhere and uh, uh, it'll save you. It could save your life. I mean, really, it could save your life. So, uh, absolutely. Eric, if, if there's anything you'd like to say going out, feel free to do that. But uh, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. And, and I appreciate I, you having me on as well. Thank you. And you're dead on right. You know, trauma isn't the, the most severe things like you mentioned. It, could, it can be something that may seem small. But if it's something that's lingering from your past, you can let it go. You don't have to carry that for the rest of your life. Yeah. And yeah, just like you were saying, if, if money is a concern, you can do the tapping on your own and start chipping away at it. And then I, all I say is for, for, if it's something really complex and really complicated, I do advise working with someone. There are plenty of practitioners who do, who do group therapies as well with EFT, which does save on the money, or you can do, there's, there's the apps, or you can do free workshops like I mentioned. I would just say, give it a try. Either it's gonna click or it doesn't, and it's fine. Yeah, no doubt. Awesome, Eric. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. For those who didn't know, I mean, this was really, a, we put this together really quickly and I really appreciate your flexibility for that one because I think it's just a great moment, great time to be able to share this information with folks. So thanks again, Eric, for being here today. I wish you well, and I'm really grateful for you, who you are and where you're getting ready to go with your life. Quite an amazing journey. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Have a good one.